All right, Tiffany, this is Lightroom by Adobe, uh, version three. Um, I just kind of got three recently. I don't really notice too much different than the first one that I had. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna show you some overexposure correction that you can do with Lightroom that's not possible um, with Photoshop uh, to my knowledge. What I'm gonna do is I imported some photos from my trip to San Francisco. Um, I've got some that are regular exposed, slightly over, and then way overexposed. And what we're gonna do is just kinda show you uh, some different ways that we can fix this versus Photoshop. Photoshop's a great tool. It's mostly, um, at first came out for basically doing everything. This Lightroom edition is for photographers who just need to edit their pictures. They don't need to add text or create layers or throw crazy things on. This would be more so for someone who's gonna do a wedding or something in bulk. Very easy to do, can multiple images uh, being edited at a time. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is I'm gonna pick a photo that is slightly underexposed. And this is our library mode. This is much like the first, ver uh, the first view in Express Digital that we can see the entire catalog. If I go to develop, I can see uh, all my photos down here in a film strip uh, view. And when it first starts off, it's gonna be in this mode here. I've got the ability to uh, see the regular image. I can click, zoom in, click around, zoom out. It does have a really cool uh, option too that I can split the image in half before and after top and bottom or I can do it left and right. There's a lot more options, but this left and right one's a great tool. And what I'm gonna do here is kind of go through the histogram a little bit more. Um, so what the guy didn't show you was, first of all, let's pick an underexposed picture. And I know he didn't do it because he was teaching overexposure. But just like you played around with the histogram on the right hand side, the great thing about this is if you look over here and it should say blacks right under here. So it turns to blacks, it's got your mid light, your exposure, and then this is a recovery area, which we'll go through. And I'm in the develop mode, and if I scroll up here, I've got some other tools. Uh, I can change my white balance, all these other kind of things, but I'm gonna stay on exposure because I just wanna manipulate uh, the exposure of the histogram. So the first thing he showed you was the blacks. And if I move this tool over, you can see how it manipulates the blacks and how the histogram reacts. Now, if you notice, if I move the histogram too far to left, a little arrow popped up. And if I put my little cursor over it, you should notice that there's blue coming up here. And it's saying, hey, this area is underexposed, or what it really actually means is there's no detail in those areas. It's too dark, no detail. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna go too far with it. I'm just gonna bring it back where that white arrow goes away. I know nothing's ever exposed. I've only moved it three, so no big deal. But as we can see, we have too much room here. And this is really where we wanna go. So I can move over the exposure tool and histogram moves to the right. And again, I can keep going really far. And if I put my cursor over it saying, hey, these are the areas where there's overexposure or specifically no detail, it's too bright or white. So I'm gonna bring that back down to uh, what my eye would typically see. And see if I leave it right about there, there's still room here, you can, you can see that there's still room. If I go over the cursor, it shows nothing ever exposed. And the thing you remember is that if I move that exposure tool over and it showed just a little bit of red, a little bit of green, now it's yellow. It Maybe hard to see on the screen, but it's right here. It's on the wave, some of the waves. So even though the, the histogram's telling you, uh, if you look at it statistically that, hey, nothing's overexposed, there may be overexposure, but it may not be important. So let's say that I don't really care if part of the waves are overexposed, no big deal. I can do that. So I still have room to play with to make the picture look however I want it to come out. But I'm gonna go ahead and move the exposure tool down to where it would be statistically correct, not visually correct. So it's statistically correct at this point that this these graphs can go up and down all they want. We just wanna make sure they don't go off before going all the way down on both sides. So we don't want this. We want it to go down before it goes off to the side. Now you can see before and after, much better, much better picture. But again, we kind of played with a photograph that was underexposed. So this would be an example of how uh, very briefly an underexposed photo can look 
more like what your eye would see. Uh, let's go to one that's about halfway. It's uh, not too bad overexposed, not really bad. It's just not great. You look at it and go, eh, looks like uh, you know someone just took it with a point and shoot, no big deal. But let's use those same things. You can see I've got a lot of room here in the blacks. And just like the guy I showed you, I'm going to move it to the left. And fill up that area right until um, it's filled and there's no um, highlights coming up in this warning tab. This is my warning tabs. Warning, underexposure, warning, overexposure. And you'll see by just doing that, the photo on the right looks much more polished than the one on the left. What you can't see is I actually have two monitors. On the second monitor, it's full screen image. It looks spectacular. Really good image. Now remember, this was just a kind of decent image we'd had before. Again, you could do the same thing with Photoshop, but the recovery tool is what really comes in handy uh, when we have overexposure. Overexposure is much more likely than underexposure. Now I'm going to finish this off. And again, if I look here, there's a little bit in the waves that are creating some overexposure. I don't really care about that. It's white, no big deal. Um, maybe I want to add a little exposure to it. But you know what, it doesn't look very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to where I was. And I have fill light, and fill light's the mid-tone. So if I play with the mid-tone a little bit, you can see how it plays with what would be the middle part, not the bright, not the dark, but more so the mountains through here. These are things getting played with. So it's just an easier way to kind of do it than Photoshop. Photoshop's great, but this is kind of convenient, especially if you're going to do 10, 12, 15 pictures or like a family shoot or a wedding. So the final one, we're going to go to one that's overexposed. This is just a picture that's just doesn't look good. We got to do something about it. So the one key thing to remember is when you have overexposure, that means that there's too much light and there's no detail. So Recovery tool is a great thing to fix to an extent, but it's not going to fix everything. Settings that you have on the camera, like F8, shutter speed of 125, makes a huge difference. Now, when I took these pictures, I actually took these three in a row to flatten them into one image. So I wasn't not paying attention to my settings. I knew what I was doing for a purpose. But we're going to say that, you know what, I'm going to mess up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the black ones. That's just the most obvious. And I'm going to fill it in to where it looks good. Right about there. Now if you look at it, it doesn't look actually as nice as the second picture that we had earlier. And if I go back to the second picture, that looks much more pleasing to the eye on the right side than here. If you notice, the reason is, mostly is that sky in the middle just, you know, doesn't have that blue to it like the middle one does. It doesn't have that tonal variation, the variation in the blue that we would see with our eyeball, but the camera doesn't pick up as easy. Now we've got this tool and obviously the histograms way too far to the right. We've got overexposure and it's telling you specifically these areas don't have any detail. Too bright, it's red. So 